mini upper right transversal hepatectomy with double vascular reconstruction for recurrent colorectal metastasis involving the right hepatic vein and middle hepatic vein at the hepatocaval confluence. The case is about a 68 year old female with history of rectosigmoid junction adenocarcinoma removed laparoscopically in 2014 and colidocephal stones removed endoscopically two years later. A CT scan performed on March 2016 revealed two metastases at the hepatocaval confluence. The patient was evaluated by the oncology multidisciplinary team and according also to the results recently obtained in our center, was considered to take advantage of parenchyma sparing approach. The first metastasis was in the segment 4 between the middle and the left hepatic vein confluence. To obtain the excision of the indicated area was realized a liver tunnel with exposure of the hepatic veins and inferior vena cava. The second lesion was in the segment 7, distant from the right hepatic vein and was removed with a partial resection of segment 7. The right hepatic vein is surrounded by tourniquet and the inferior vena cava is completely spared from the liver. At the pathologic examination, the two lesions were confirmed metastasis of colorectal adenocarcinoma. Therefore, the patient had six cycles of oxyalux regimen and two cycles of capacitabine alone due to oxaniplatinum toxicity. One year later, a control MR scan revealed another pathologic lesion in contact with the right hepatic vein at the apatocaval confluence. Thinking into account the previous parenchyma sparing hepatectomy, and observing the preoperative images was not certainly predictable the preservation of middle hepatic vein. Parenchyma sparing hepatectomy with vascular reconstruction was therefore indicated. The metastasis is pointed by the purple arrow and the same lesion is evidenced in this 3D reconstruction. The other two metastases already removed in the previous parenchyma sparing hepatectomy are artificially painted in light blue for the purpose of underlying the distance between the lesions. Considering the proximity of the lesion to the right hepatic vein and the middle hepatic vein confluence, the right lobectomy could also be indicated with the sacrifice of a significant portion of parenchyma and a future liver remnant of 26%. With the parenchyma sparing approach, we intend to remove only the metastasis, saving approximately the 98% of the liver. A J-shaped thoracoabdominal incision was performed to obtain an adequate exposure of the posterior segments. A complete liver mobilization was obtained. During the dissection was required the resection of diaphragmatic patch infiltrated by the tumor. Right, middle and left hepatic veins were skeletonized and surrounded by tourniquet, obtaining a selective control of the liver outflow. Also the hepatic artery was isolated. We proceeded clamping the hepatic artery and the right hepatic vein to evaluate the presence of communicating veins between right and middle hepatic veins. Macroscopically, there was not evident demarcation. To have a further evaluation, we use intraoperative fluorescent scan with intravenous injection of endiogenin green. This method revealed a minor perfusion corresponding with the drainage area of the right hepatic vein, indicating a not complete maturation of communicating veins. Vascular reconstruction was therefore advisable. The right hepatic vein drainage area was marked by the surgeon using the advantage of real-time fluorescence view. Intermittent Pringles maneuver allowed parenchymal calliclasia without significant blood loss. The resection area was limited to obtain metastasis excision, but the peritumoral tissue reaction required also the resection of the middle hepatic vein. 
The right hepatic vein was clamped distally to the tumor and proximally at the caval confluence. The vessel was sectioned close to the resected liver, preserving a cuff for possible anastomosis. Likewise, the middle hepatic vein was clamped and sectioned proximally and distally to the tumor, preserving the vessel as long as possible for vascular reconstruction. The last part of the hepatectomy was the section of the glissonian capsule. The vessel's length was sufficient to permit a direct reconstruction. The anastomosis was performed with an end-to-end 6O proline rounding suture. In this sequence is shown simultaneously the reconstruction of the right hepatic vein on the left and of the middle hepatic vein on the right. In this final view it is possible to appreciate the hepatocaval confluence completely exposed with the reconstruction of the right and middle hepatic veins. Macroscopically no perfusion defects were evident. The fluorescence controlled confirmed optimal parenchymal perfusion. The surgical duration was 12 hours without significant blood loss. The postoperative course was uneventful and the patient was discharged on 9th postoperative day. Liver function tests returned to normal levels within the 5th postoperative day. At macroscopical inspection of the resected liver, infiltration of the right hepatic vein and diaphragm was evident. Pathological examination confirmed the lesion was a metastasis of adenocarcinoma with infiltration of the right hepatic vein and diaphragm. Resection margins were free. This image is an oblique section of the right hepatic vein. The black arrow indicates the vessel's lumen. The red arrows indicate smooth muscle fibers of the tunica media and the white arrowheads indicate neoplastic infiltration. 200 times magnification shows the detail of the tunica media neoplastic infiltration. After eight months, the patient is still in good clinical conditions. At the control CT scan, there is no evidence of disease and the vascular anastomosis are regular.